Half a dozen bills to restrict the care and athletic activity of transgender youth and loosen charter school regulations are now law after both chambers of the General Assembly voted this evening to override Governor Roy Cooper's vetoes. WWA Sydney Bouchelle has a breakdown of the new laws going into effect. House Bill 808 bans medical professionals from providing hormone therapy, puberty blocking drugs, and surgical gender transition procedures to anyone under 18, with limited medical exceptions. North Carolina is now the 22nd state to restrict these types of treatments. House Bill 574, known as the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, bans transgender girls and women from competing in women's sports in middle school, high school, and college athletics. Senate Bill 49, known as the Parents' Bill of Rights, also known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, bans elementary schools from having curricula or books in the library, dealing with LGBTQ issues or other content addressing sexuality. It also allows parents access to their children's medical records. Critics claim that provision might lead to the outing of transgender children who would prefer their parents not to know. House Bill 219, known as the Charter School Omnibus Bill, expands enrollment rules for charters and allow county governments to use property tax revenue to pay for charter school buildings and other capital projects. House Bill 618 will create a new board to vet and grant charter school applications. It gives more power to legislative leaders, taking some authority away from the State Board of Education. House Bill 488 will divide the state's current building code council into two bodies. One will focus on residential buildings and the other on commercial. The law also bans the building code council from updating the current building code and adding new energy efficiency rules. The votes in the Senate were entirely along party lines. In the House, a few more moderate Democrats broke with their party and voted with Republicans. Cooper released a statement in response to the votes, which not only criticizes what lawmakers did on Wednesday, but also what they haven't done, with the state operating without a budget for more than a month. And thanks to electoral gains in last November's elections and Mecklenburg County Representative Trisha Cotham switching from the Democratic Party to the GOP last spring, Republicans hold veto-proof majorities in both chambers for the first time since 2018. 